So, fellas, we've just had UFC Macau. I might go out and say this has been one of the best fight night cards this year. I mean, PTN's back in the winning column. Um, we're going to be discussing the main card, but even the prelims had so many good moments. We had one of the most brutal knockouts I've ever seen in women MMA. It reminded me of Uriah Hall back in the day on The Ultimate Fighter. Great flyweight performance from Kavanaugh, but we're going to be discussing the main card, recapping, breaking down, going through every fight, because I think this is a really good fight, on the main, uh, especially the main card as well. And we'll start off with the first fight. We had Ozzy Diaz versus Min Yang Zhang. Min Yang Zhang has to be one of the most dangerous light heavyweights on the roster right now. And I don't want to say it too early because he has only had two fights in the UFC. Or it might be three, but I'm pretty sure one was the contender series. Uh, but he goes out there and knocks him out in the first round like he has done to every single one of his opponents. Um, they were kind of swinging wild at first. Ozzy Diaz was able to tank a few and then eventually hit him with an elbow. And just put Ozzy Diaz straight to sleep like he's done to 18 other people. Because this dude, I find that a crazy statistic. This dude's got 18 wins. All of them coming by first round knockout. I find that so dangerous. 3-0 in the UFC. I think it's 2-0. I mean, if you count the contender series, 3-0. All first round knockouts. This dude just so dangerous. Big light heavyweight prospect. And I feel like light heavyweight is a division that's kind of lacked prospects. I know we've got the likes of Vito, Petrino, and Umar Sai, but I feel like it needs prospect. And Ming Yang Zhang is that perfect prospect for the light heavyweight division. He's an absolute stud. Um, I will say he is quite hittable. Like, there were times when Ozzy Diaz was having success and he was able to back him against the cage and land a couple of shots, which is going to be a problem uh, once he starts fighting the higher ends of competition. But this dude's going to be a huge problem at light heavyweight. He called for the top 15. I don't mind giving him somebody in the top 15. If not, give him somebody like Dustin Jacoby. Like, at least give him Alonzo Manyfield. I think if you give him Manyfield, he starches Manyfield and makes it into the rankings because this is what we need in light, he light heavyweight division. There's not many prospects. Ming Yang Zhang, what he's done in these past couple of, in these past couple of fights, he's definitely uh, put himself as a name out there. So, good win for Ming Yang Zhang. What are the most dangerous light heavyweights on the roster um, and another first round knockout as he's been doing to 18 other opponents and then we had Carlos Uberg versus Volkan Uzdemir this was a big fight I feel like Uberg's probably the biggest I, I know I just talked about light heavyweight not having prospects but if we're talking about in the actual rankings Carlos Uberg is probably the biggest up and coming guy a lot of hype around him just knocked out Manyfield in uh, like, I think it was 12 seconds and now we got his big step up against Volkan Uzdemir it was a really good fight back and forth Carlos Uberg controlled most of the fight got the decision when I've heard a lot of people saying that it was kind of not fraud check but it was disappointing how he went to a decision. And I'm like, you put somebody like Jamal Hill against Volkan Uzdemir. I don't think Jamal Hill finishes him either. I think Uzdemir is a very tough dude. And But yeah, very good back and forth fight. It's kind of like, this is what happens when you put two counter punches against each other. Because there were a lot of the times where they were both kind of just waiting for each other to throw. And then when one of them threw, the other one had counter back. So they were kind of just throwing at the same time. Both of them have solid chins as well. They both tanked so many different shots. I remember at the beginning of the third round when Volkan Uzdemir just started sprinting at Carlos Uberg. I was having flashbacks to the Manifield fight. Um, but I think think for Carlos Ulberg, we give him somebody in the top five. I don't mind if you put him against Jamal Hill, even a Yere, a Khalil Roundtree, a Yambla Ho, which that's the next step in my opinion for Carlos Ulberg. He's won his last seven fights, I think. Most of them coming by way of finish. Just beat Uzdemir. Um, I say we give him somebody in the top five. I don't mind a comeback with Yambla Ho, which may be a Jamal Hill who was scheduled to fight at UFC 3 or 3. So I think we give Ulberg a top five opponent. I feel like Volkan Uzdemir, the perfect way to describe him, he's like the Jeff Neal of the light heavyweight division. Like, he's good enough to make it into the top 10, but every up-and-comer beats him. Um, but he's able to every now and then just pull off an impressive win. Yeah, I feel like the comparison to Jeff Neal, not from a styles perspective, but from a career's perspective, it's just the perfect way to describe Uzdemir. But good win for Carlos Ulberg. Um, I need to see how he does against the top opponent, because again, he did go to a decision. And I'm not going to say he dominated the fight. He, he definitely won the fight, but it wasn't complete domination. So I want to see how he does when you up the level and give him somebody like Jamal Hill, who I think he could beat so good win for Carlos Uber, got the decision win. And then we have Kong Wang versus Gabriela Fernandez, a massive upset win, comeback as well. Fernandez got the submission in the second round. And there we go. The only prospect in women MMA is gone. The I mean, I'd say Kong Wang probably had more hype than any other women MMA fighter coming into this card, even more than the core main event. She had so much hype. A lot of people were bought on the hype of Kong Wang, and she goes out there, and she has a pretty dominant performance at the beginning, and then loses. Massive upset from Fernandez. Wang was dominating the entire fight, piecing her up on the feet. It felt like it was only a matter of time before she got the finish. She was able to keep the fight on the feet as well, until eventually Fernandez just landed a couple of head kicks, took it to the mat, took the back, and got the Rainmaker choke and put it to sleep. So, massive upset win from Gabriela Fernandez. In terms of Kong Wang, I think she can come back from this. I don't, I don't like throwing away the term throw check every single time a prospect loses. I don't think she's a fraud. She's definitely got things to work on because she was dominating the entire fight. And I think she has got potential to, to climb the rankings in the flyweight division. But it's a good win from Fernandez. Massive upset. Uh, massive comeback win as well. And um, there we go. Another woman um, a prospect down the drain. And then we had the featured fight of the night. This was this is a KO of the year contender. I fucking went crazy when Salikov landed this. Muslim Salikov knocks Keenan Song out in the first round. 
Muslim Salikov, this guy, I love Dagestanis who come with a striking style. Like you've got obviously Sharaputi Magomedov, you've got a couple of other guys, but Salikov, the king of Kung Fu, goes out there, spinning wheel kick, puts Kenon, to, Kenon Song to sleep in the first round. Massive knockout. I think that's a KO of the year contender. Not only a knockout of the night, he's got to receive a bonus or two, but I think that's a knockout of the year contender. Brutal, brutal knockout. Perfect knockout, perfect precision as well from Muslim Salikov, who's 40 years old. I've heard a lot of people saying he's a bit washed up now that he's 40 years old. Even myself, I've said that in previous videos, but... I don't think he's washed up in the sense that, you know, he's, he needs to retire ASAP. The dude's still got it. He's been picking up wins every now and then. Just got a brutal KO of the year contender win. And I think he's an absolute beast on the feet. Like, you're talking about Ian Gary on his come up when Ian Gary was fighting the likes of Song. If you give Ian Gary on his come up, Muslim Salikov, this might sound delusional. Um, and maybe I'm reaching too far because he just got an insane knockout. But I don't even know if it, uh, Ian Gary got past him because Ian Gary was getting dropped left, right, and center when he was on his come up. You put him against Muslim Salikov, who's a pretty solid striker as well as Muslim Salikov. Really good striking. It's very rare that we see him get outstruck. I know he's a little bit chinny nowadays. He got KO'd by Randy Brown, but. Um, very good KO. One of the, I mean, I say very good KO. I'd say that's a KO of the year contender from Muslim Salikov. Um, and yeah, just a, an amazing knockout. I don't really know what's next for him because he has lost most of his recent fights, but yeah, definitely the best knockout on the entire card. I mean, there's been so many head kick knockouts on this card. We had that brutal one that I was just talking about on the prelims. There were multiple times when people got head kicked in this fight, in this, um, on this card. And for Muslim Salikov to go out there and get a knockout of the year contender, great knockout. And then we had the core main event, Yang Xiao Nan versus Tabitha Ritchie. Yang Zhao Nam did exactly what we all thought she was going to do, cruise to a decision win. Um, I, hate, I, I hate this new trend now that, that Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje have settled that every single, it seems like every single card, people point to the canvas and they do absolutely nothing. I know it wasn't really Yang Zhao Nan's fault, but it happens in every other card now. All the time I see people pointing to the canvas, trying to be Holloway, getting the crowd excited, and then absolutely nothing happens. And it happened like three different times in this fight. Even when there was two seconds left of the entire fight, Yang Zhao Nan was pointing in the, pointing in the middle. I don't mind it once if you're saying, okay, let's fight in the middle, stop running away. I don't mind it if that's what she's trying to do. But when it happens like multiple times every round, it just gets irritating. But good win for Yang Zhanan. Still a top straw weight in the world. Called for a rematch with Zhang Weili and Bispin was like, yeah, I can't wait to see that one. I don't want to see an immediate rematch yet. Let's give, um, what's her name, Werner Janderoba a title shot against Zhang Weili because also when is Zhang Weili going to come back? She's been out since UFC 300. She's so inactive. Do Werner Janderoba versus Zhang Weili. Give Yang Zhanan another contender. Maybe give her, I don't know, just give her another contender. Um, but yeah, good win. Still very dangerous as Yang Zhanan. Still a top fighter. And she weren't even doing that bad in the Weili fight, to be fair. So good to see her back in the Willingcom, back in title talks. And then the main event. PTN versus Davis and Figueredo. This was a super high level fight. Probably one of the highest level fights we've actually seen this year. You've got a former bantamweight champ, former flyweight champion in Davis and Figueredo, who at the time was 3 0 at bantamweight versus a former bantamweight champion coming off a win. Super high level. PTN won the decision. Um, I always kind of get a little bit worried when Yang goes to a decision after his past couple of fights, getting that robbery loss to Sterling and obviously O'Malley, but you got the decision win. Such a high-level fight, though. Super back and forth. The beginning of the first round, Davidson Figueredo takes it to the mat, um, and then immediately PTN uh, counters. And then the entire fight, the, the whole story of the fight was PTN outstriking Davidson Figueredo, but, but Figueredo had multiple moments. Dropped PTN, um, I think it was the fourth round, wobbled him a few, I don't want to say wobbled him a few times, but um, hit him with some big shots a couple of times, and Fig Figueredo was landing back. It wasn't complete domination from PTN. And Yan's back in title talks. Now, I don't think he becomes another champion, because last time we saw him face Marab, he got absolutely dominated in that fight and I think the exact same thing would happen if he was to fight Umana Magomedov um, but I think he's always going to be a top three guys PTN I say we give him a title shot in his next fight do Umar versus Marab and I guess you can do PTN versus a winner but the dude's such a killer he's got the wrestling he's got perfect defensive uh, ground game perfect defensive striking and he's one of the best strikers if not the best striker right now in the bantamweight division um, Figueredo, though, I think he's going to stay in the top five for a while. I don't see Figueredo leaving the top five. Um, if you look at him compared to the rest of the Bantamweight division, I mean, he just had a super close fight to PTM where he had him hurt multiple times. I'd love to see Figueredo versus Sandhagen. I think that'd be one of the most high-level fights we could see. Figueredo versus Sandhagen in a fight night main event. Um, but yeah, good fight from the two of them. PTN controlling him with the boxing throughout the entire fight. I'm surprised they didn't get finished, aren't they? Especially in those fourth and fifth rounds. It seemed like every couple of seconds that one of them would land a massive shot and they'd wobble the opponent and it looked like they were going to go for a kill. But a good win for PTN. Back in the title talks. Figueredo's going to stay in the top five for a while, but really high level fight. But that's UFC Macau. In my opinion, one of the best fight nights we've had this year. I know I've said that about multiple different cards, but there were so many good finishes on this card. We had a massive comeback win. We had a bunch of knockouts. We had a high level fight. It's everything you want in a card. So, um, uh, yeah, that's my UFC Macau Fight Night main card breakdown. Let me know your thoughts on the card. Thank you for watching.